the greatest light show on Earth, Los Angeles by night. A man-made galaxy of electricity. Almost 10 million people and 6 million cars on an energy binge. But all around the world, others want in on the fun. What's basically happening in Mumbai is that they want to go the LA way, build more flyovers, turn them around, go over here, go there, do this, all for private transport. People emulate the Los Angeles lifestyle, emulate the dependence on the automobile and the ownership of the automobile, not only as status, but as a necessity. That may not be the model to emulate. As the binge behavior of modern cities causes the climate to change, the predicted consequences are sobering. For Los Angeles, one of the biggest players at the party, it's proving more than just a headache. On the 105 eastbound. Oh, good morning again. No collisions in the way right now. Looking it's off to the now. side now, but it is still packed in there. A city spun from cars. Nowhere is associated with the automobile more than here. Now every American city is wedded to motor transport, but it's here the relationship began. It's the original car capital home to the first ever urban freeway, the city which has projected the image of the automobile around the world. But while Los Angeles is familiar to millions, if you really want to know these streets, you have to talk to those who drive them. One good thing about Los Angeles is that you, you have the, the freeways that can get you, you can get anywhere in 15 to 25 minutes. It's easily accessible. Deborah is the owner of her own limo company. It's big business here. Cars aren't just a means to get from A to B. They're birthday treats, party venues, status symbols. We have politicians, we have actors, and we have lay people, like regular people like you and me, you know, that hire these cars. In fact, they rent them more and they tip better. <laughs> no, don't, don't put that in there. So how about, let's say, David Sky Limo? I carry two phones with me. <laughs> I have two cell phones. And I'm, I'm working them, you know? <laughs> OK, it's Deborah Wings Limousine. Deborah's business is one of over a 1,000 limo companies in LA. It's a place where an estimated 21 million car trips are taken every day. Once described as 72 suburbs in search of a city, LA is a place impossible to navigate without wheels. Driving in LA, uh, it's really crazy. The traffic is getting worse and worse. Now everybody has a car. Their mom, pops, children, <laughs> everyone has a car. They are everywhere you look. Millions of people earning a living, going to work, doing the school run, making the best life they can from this city, living the American dream. But alongside dreams come nightmares. The US produces 45% of all CO2 emissions generated by cars worldwide. Emissions that scientists believe are contributing to global warming, sometimes with devastating consequences. About 2,000 acres have burned in the San Gabriel Canyon above Azusa. That fire is about 60%. Wildfire destroyed one and a half million acres in California in 2008. From May to August, as prolonged drought dried up vegetation, the state experienced the greatest wildfire siege in its history. The fires uh, are getting larger, which is kind of strange because we're getting better at fighting them. We have uh, a lot better equipment. We're using dozers, or camp crews, helicopters. So you think these fires be going out quicker, but because the vegetation is becoming drier, uh, it's harder to put these fires out. This fire in August 2009 was the largest in L.A. County's history. For almost eight weeks, it darkened the days and lit the nights, burning through 160,000 acres. We were looking at the flames that were 
on this hillside and we could see them. I mean, literally it's, you watch the flame just going up the hill. It's a, it's a spectacular sight to see, but nothing like I'd ever seen before in my life. About at noon, we get this pounding on our door and it was a fire marshal. He was, he was screaming, he's like, you gotta leave, you gotta leave. And we come and we look outside and we're, this is our door right here. We walk out this door and it was just a maelstrom of smoke. Nothing like I'd ever seen. And when you see something like that, you really realize that, you know, fighting these things with your garden hose is going to do absolutely nothing. Firefighters now have 22% containment on the station fire burning in the end. For any evacuees or anybody who had any smoke damage or anything to their home. L.A. looked like a ring of smoke. And that pall of smoke then hung over the basin. It really was like something from Tolkien or Dante's Inferno. You really couldn't see the sun clearly. There was the acrid smell of the smoke. It was incredible. Over 200 buildings were destroyed in the fire, a sign of things to come. If temperatures continue to rise as predicted, research shows the number of fires in California could increase by up to 53% in the next 100 years. If you're worried about climate warming and you're worried about the future, that's not a future that you want to have. This is a place which is used to the limelight. And in the climate change debate, California has given itself a starring role. While America dithers, this state has launched the most aggressive plan to battle global warming in the nation. Never want to miss a PR opportunity. They hail it as the world's most comprehensive global warming law. L.A. and Hollywood, land of opportunities. <laughs> when they have the awards show, they roll out the red carpet, and you have all the guys that are dressed up in costumes. You have all the different uh, characters that walk Hollywood Boulevard. L.A. has made its fortune from heroes and villains, good guys and bad. In the battle against a changing climate, they have their very own superhero. We need nothing less than a revolution to combat climate change. And of course, let's not forget some strong muscles, some defined muscles we need here. And that's why I'm here today to pump you all up, to pump you all up and to say, yes, we can do it. We can do it. The Terminator turned governator, flexing his political muscles at the governor's climate change summit. Big movements all start on the grassroots level, on the local level, then on the state level, and then they gain momentum, and then they sweep through the nations, and they go around the world. As a matter of fact, I tell you, there's never been any movement that hasn't started on the grassroots level. That is where the action is, so we are where the action is. California's landmark proposals to slash emissions 30% by 2020 is likely to be where the government looks when they want a national plan. It's the politics of climate change being shaped not by world leaders, but by local governments. Frankly, we think that LA's got to lead the way. Los Angeles, as you know, has the dirtiest air in the United States of America. It is a city that historically, uh, the quintessential city, if you will, of sprawl, it is a city that is not focused uh, on smart growth, but a city that has uh, changed its tune uh, over the last four years. For Los Angeles, being serious about climate change has meant reassessing the very things which define it. There are some girls won't date a guy unless he has a car. And that, that's sad, but it's true. And then there are some girls that don't date you unless you have a certain type of car. I've heard of that. I'm not that type of girl. <laughs> you know? California is the only state in America with the right to set its own vehicle emission standards. And they've made them more stringent than federal rules. Other states can choose which standards they follow. So far, 13 are going the Californian way. You know, all the cars, they have to come up to the regulations. Otherwise, if they don't pass the cars, you, know, um, you don't get your registration, you don't have your registration, your cars are towed. They have very, very strict laws about the, the cars now, and they enforce it. According to the State Air Resources Board, nearly three quarters of the world's population live in countries with vehicle emission standards pioneered by California. 
it's the most influential state in the US. If it were a country, its economy would rank as the eighth largest in the world. And where money goes, people tend to follow. So I think uh, whatever lead is set in the US will be followed by the rest of the world, as indeed has been the case for at least 100 years. Um, the, the sort of dream, the, the desire of every uh, individual, every society across the globe is to follow what the US has established as, as its uh, standard of living, as its lifestyle. But the US, which has 254 million vehicles on the roads, is the world's second biggest CO2 emitter. Its lifestyle might not be one this planet can sustain for much longer. India, a country in which leading car makers predict annual sales will triple in the next decade.